All right, we are back for math and we are ready to correct our math problems, Michael and Grayson. Okay, so we're gonna get started with our top row of problems, one through three. So we know that whenever we have a whole number and we're dividing a problem that has a whole number and a fraction, our first step is to always make the whole number into a fraction. So I'm gonna go ahead right now, my top row, I'm going to turn all of my whole numbers into fractions by putting our fraction line and a one underneath them. Now I'm ready. So I know when I am dividing with fractions, I keep the first fraction the way it is. So I would keep five over one. I would change the division symbol to multiplication. And then I flip my second fraction. And what does that form? What's that word? It starts with an R. Will? We, the reciprocal, exactly, the reciprocal. So it's kind of like the opposite. Instead of 2 over 3, we have 3 over 2. So if I multiply across, 5 times 3 gets me 15. 1 times 2 gets me 2. Now, that's an improper fraction. So to turn it into a mixed number, I ask, how many times does 2 go into 15? How many times does it, 5th grade? 7, because 7 times 2 is 14. So 7, well, 7 times 2 gets me to 14, but I need to get to 15. So that means I have 1 left over, and I keep the 2 as my denominator. How many of you got 7 and a half for number 1? Okay, awesome. Good. And then number 2, I already put, I already changed my whole number into a fraction. So I keep my first fraction the way it is. I change my division symbol to multiplication. And I flipped my second fraction so that it becomes the reciprocal. Yes, I want us to get used to that word. So now it's 5 over 1 instead of 1 over 5. Well, when I multiply across, 10 times 5 gets me 50. 1 times 1 gets me 1. Well, 50 over 1 is the same as the whole number 50. How many of you got 50 for number 2? Awesome job. Then we have number three. Number three, I already turned my whole number into a fraction, so I keep the first fraction. I change the division symbol to multiplication. I flip the second fraction so it forms the reciprocal. Instead of one over four, it is now four over one. Seven times four is 28. 1 times 1 is 1. Well, 28 over 1 gets me the whole number, 28. Raise your hand if you got number 28 correct. Or, excuse me, number 3 correct. Yep. Awesome, fifth grade. Good job. Okay, questions on 1 through 3 at all? Will, do you have a question? Um, it's not really a question. Okay. But, um, I, like, I got all the six ones wrong because I did it like the opposite where it's two thirds divided by five and like one fifth divided by two. Oh, so we kind of flipped it around a little bit. Okay. So remember, we keep, change, flip. Yep. You always flip the second fraction, yeah. not the first. You always flip the second. You go in order. K, C, F. Keep, change, flip. All right. So then, four through six. Now, again, I'm looking, I see whole numbers. So right away, I know I need to turn them into fractions. So I'm going to go ahead and put my fraction line and one beneath every single one of them so that I am ready. In fifth grade, there is no rule. When you have, like, your math homework, there's no rule saying you can't go ahead and just do that to all of your problems right away so you don't forget. You don't have to, okay, I'm on number four, so I can only mess with number four right now. I would go ahead and just change all my whole numbers to uh, fractions right away. Okay. So if we're remembering keep, change, flip, KCF, I keep my first fraction. I change my division symbol to multiplication. And then I flip my second fraction so it forms the reciprocal. So instead of 5 over 1, it is 1 over 5. Well, when I multiply, 1 times 1 gets me 1. 2 times 5 is 10. Can I simplify one-tenth? Nope. 
Raise your hand if you got one tenth as your answer. Or awesome. Good. Awesome. Then for number five, again, I already made my whole number into a fraction. Instead of six, it's six over one. So I keep the first fraction the same. I'm going to put it down here this time. I keep it. I change the division symbol to multiplication. And then I flip my second fraction so it forms the reciprocal. Yep. So one times one is one. Six times three is. 18. So 118. Can I simplify that at all? No. 118. Raise your hand if you got 118 for number five. Or give me a thumbs up. Either one. Awesome. Awesome. Then we have number six. So again, number six, I had the whole number 10. I already turned it into a fraction, 10 over one. I keep the first fraction the same, two fifths. I change the division symbol to multiplication, and I flip my second fraction to where it forms the reciprocal. So then I multiply across. 2 times 1 is 2. 5 times 10 is 50. Can I simplify this one? What number, show me on your hands, goes into both 2 and 50? 2 and 50 are both divisible by the number 2. So, divide both by 2. 2 divided by 2 is 1. 50 divided by 2 is 25. Can I simplify any more? Nope. Give me a thumbs up if you got 1 25th as your final answer for number 6. Okay. Awesome. Other questions on... Four through six. Okay. Then we get into seven through nine. Now, for seven through nine, do I have any whole numbers? No, there are no whole numbers. So I have none that I need to convert. So I go right into keep, change, flip. So for number seven, I keep the first fraction the same. I change my division symbol to multiplication. And I flipped my second fraction so it forms the reciprocal. Nice. So instead of 1 over 3, I have 3 over 1. When I do that, 1 times 3 is 3. 2 times 1 is 2. What kind of fraction is this, fifth grade? It's improper. My numerator is larger than my denominator. So I need to turn it into a mixed number. So I ask, how many times does 2 go into 3? And how many times does 2 go into 3, fifth grade? Once. So that's my whole number one as a part of my mixed number. Well, two times one only gets me to two. I need to get to three. So I have one left over. And then I keep the two as my denominator. Give me a thumbs up if you got one and a half as your answer for number seven. All right, nice work. Now let's look at number eight. Again, I don't have any whole numbers, so nothing to convert. I'm going to keep eight tenths the way it is. I'm going to change my division symbol into multiplication. And then I'm going to flip my second fraction so it forms the reciprocal. reciprocal. Instead of 1 over 5, I have 5 over 1. 8 times 5 is 40. 10 times 1 is 10. Is this an improper fraction? Yes. So I ask, how many times does 10 go into 40? Show me on your hands how many times does 10 go into 40. It goes in four times, and is there anything left over? No. So it is the whole number four. Give me a thumbs up if you got four for number eight. Nice. Okay. Then we had number nine. So again, number nine, no whole number, so nothing to convert. I keep my first fraction the way it is. I change my division symbol to multiplication. Then I flip my second fraction so it forms the reciprocal. So instead of three fourths, I have four thirds. Then I multiply across. Two times four is eight. Three times three is nine. Now, is this an improper fraction? No. Can I simplify this? No. 
there are a couple numbers that go into eight and a couple numbers that go into nine, but they don't have any that are the same except for one, do they? So my final answer is eight ninths. Give me a thumbs up if you got eight ninths. Okay, awesome. Now, Will, do you have a question? Yeah. What's your question? So first, I didn't do this, but for number eight. Yes. Like, when you still get the answer between um, um, 8 tenths and the 4 fifths? Yes, because um, 8 tenths, if that became 4 fifths, then you would be taking 4 fifths times 5 over 1. So that would be, um, oh, yeah, 20 yep, 20 over 5. Yep, and 5 goes into 24 times. So you would still get 4. Nice job. All right, so fifth grade, to reflect, show me your level of understanding one through five on our top row when you took a whole number and divided it by a fraction. Show me one through five on the top row. How do we feel about the top row? Zoe and Jack, show me a number for the top row, one through five. Okay? Okay. Then on the second row, when we took a fraction and divided it by a whole number, one through five, how did we feel? Everyone should be showing me something. Second row. Awesome. Then on the third row, when we just had two fractions, one through five, how did we feel about this? All right. Now show me all together, all these types of problems, one through five, how did you feel? All right. All right. Nice job. Hands down. Um, you don't need anything out for grammar today except for a pencil.